All right, so this is a video lesson for uh, Unit 11, Lesson 4, which is our first lesson on factoring. You'll notice in our title here that the x squared term does not have a coefficient. Well, it does. That coefficient is 1. So you may hear us refer to this lesson as the factoring of coefficient 1. So what is factoring? We've talked about this a little bit, but factoring is um, reverse distributing. It's taking an original problem, like x squared plus 5x plus 6, and turning it into a multiplication problem, like x plus 5 times x plus 1. Um, we've talked that it's very important to be able to do this, as that leads to many of our solving methods that we'll learn in our next chapter. Um, don't forget that the first step of all factoring problems is to factor out the GCF, like what we did in the previous lesson, um, but today's uh, problems really won't contain much of that. So to get ready for this lesson, we want to take a second to um, use FOIL. Um, we called it distributing, but FOIL goes uh, because or gets called that name because it's firsts, F for firsts. Um, O for outers or outs, I for inners or ins, um, and then L for lasts, okay? Um, so what you can see in this problem is that when I take the first two terms and multiply them together, I'm getting that X squared that we see right here, okay? Well, since all of our problems today are all going to have a leading coefficient of 1, you're going to notice that all of our factors are always going to have an x and an x in the front, um, and nothing like a 2x or a 3x or a 4x, no numbers in front of the x's, um, because otherwise they wouldn't multiply out to a leading coefficient of 1. Okay? Then you'll notice for the last terms, the 3 and the 2, that they'll get multiplied together and make this 6 right here. Okay, that's because any of the other multiplications are going to involve an x, except for when you take the integer by the integer, or the 3 by the 2, which isn't going to have any x terms. Okay, so what that leaves us with is the outs and the ins, or the outsides and the insides. Okay, this 2x coming from when we're making our x go to the 2, and this 3x from when we're making this 3 go to the x. Well, those are both going to be x terms, which means you're going to be able to combine them to make this 5x. So if you take this 3 and this 2 and add them together, you're always going to get that middle term of the 5x. If you take the 3 and the 2 and multiply them together, you're going to get that last term of 6. Okay? We're going to take advantage of that when we're factoring today. The fact that we know that these two numbers will add to the middle term and multiply to the last term. So how do I factor something like x squared plus bx plus c? It's one of the biggest questions we ask in this whole class. Um, these are our steps for your notes. I'm really going to walk you through some examples, so we're not going to talk too much about this. Um, but we're going to start assuming that it's going to be two Bi or sorry, binomials, um, each with x in the front, nothing like a 2x or a 3x like we talked about. And then we're going to try to figure out what these two numbers are right here. Okay, it might be plus, it might be minus. We're going to try to figure out what those are using something I call a t-chart. Um, and then we're going to see which ones work. And, and that's really the process. So let's just get into an example. Okay, so for this problem, we are going to start by drawing our open parentheses with an x and an x. We need those because we need, for when we take our first times our first, we need that to become this x squared right here. We need that to happen, okay? Now, I'm going to draw a couple of little brackets. I really recommend this. It's going to help us for our next lesson a lot, so I want to get off to a good start with that. Okay, and now off to the side somewhere, I'm going to draw a little t-chart. Because in this lesson, it's always going to come down to what multiplies to this number, 2, 
and what adds to this number, positive 3. And we're going to think about that for a second and try to come up with two numbers that do that. What multiplies to 2 and adds to 3? I get 2 and 1. So we're going to write this as x plus 2 and x plus 1. Now, we can check our answer by distributing. We know that when we take this x times this x, we're going to get x squared. We know that at the end, when we take this 2 times this 1, we're going to get plus 2. What we don't know are these other two multiplications, which I've actually already drawn, when I take this 2 to the x and this 1 to the x, or x to the 1. So that's why I draw those two brackets. We're going to check right now to see. This is the one thing, because we picked two numbers that multiplied to 2, so we know that's going to work. And we know x times x is going to give us that x squared. What we're going to check right now is, did we pick two things that are actually going to add up to the 3 that's in the middle? Well, when that 2 goes to that x, we're going to get a plus 2x. And when that x goes to that 1, we're going to get a plus 1x. Do those add up to the middle number 3x? Yep, so this is good. We'll get plus 2x plus 1x, which ends up being x squared plus 3x plus 2, which is exactly what this is supposed to multiply it out to. So really, what our answer is, is that middle. Our answer is x plus 2 times x plus 1. Final answer. Let's do number 2. So number 2, I'm going to draw my parentheses. Okay? And I'm going to know that it's going to be x and x. And I'm going to try to figure out the middle two terms. Again, I like to do this with a little t-chart. Now, on that previous problem, I could just put a little check mark because we got the two numbers that did it. Okay, So let's take a look at this one. We want to say what's going to multiply out to this negative 12 and what's going to add to this. Well, if I don't have a number here, that number is 1. So what adds to that positive 1? Multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 1. Some of you might get this right away, and that's awesome. But if you don't get it, let's just try a few. Okay? Well, let's try 1 and 12. Well, one of them's got to be negative. We could try the 1 being negative. That's going to add to negative 11. I could make the... Uh, uh, or sorry, that'd be adding to 11. If I make the 12 negative, that'll add up to negative 11. I don't think those guys are going to work. So I just kind of cross them off. That doesn't work. What about 2 and 6? Well, if the 2's negative, um, we're going to get 4. If the 6 is negative, we're going to get negative 4. And those don't work. Those don't, those don't add up to 1. How about 3 and 4? Ah, well, if I make the 3 negative, negative 3 plus 4, there it is. So we're going to write x minus 3 x plus 4. When I multiply this out, we know we've got the automatic x squared. We know we've got the uh, negative 3 and negative 4. When they multiply together, we know that's going to be the negative 12. So we've covered this and that negative 12. Okay? And this shows us that those two, when they multiply together, they're going to give us a negative 3x. And the x and 4, they're going to give us a positive 4x. And if you added those together, you get that middle term of 1x, which is exactly what we want. And that means that we are good. This is our answer, x minus 3 times x plus 4. Okay. Moving on to number 3. Number 3, I'm going to draw my brackets, or my parentheses right away. We know it's going to be x and x, okay? I'm going to make my little t-chart, which always helps me. I'm going to say what multiplies out to negative 6 and what adds to positive 5. I'm going to try some different factors. 
Um, a lot of people are going to think of two and a three here because two and three add to five. So you might try your two and three. But if I make the two negative, I'm going to get a one. If I make the three negative, I'm going to get a negative one. And neither one of those add up to five. The tricky one that people never think of is the actual factors of six, one and six, like the easiest two factors. Well, if I make that one negative, boom, I've got it. Negative one, positive six. Okay, x minus one, x plus six. And those are our answers. And again, we'll see that if I were to multiply these together, I'd get negative one x. If I multiply these together, I get a positive six x. Those add up to that middle term of positive 5x. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And that gives us our answer. Notice I'm only highlighting the x minus 1 times the x plus 6. Okay? We've formed some pretty good habits here. Um, we can show here on the next few examples how to do this relatively quickly um, without that little guess and check um, set of brackets in the middle, um, which I think are a great habit to get used to because that's what we're going to be doing in our next lesson, which is a little tougher. But let's just see how we can kind of motor out these questions a little bit quicker. Okay, parentheses, 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 parentheses. I've got my x and I've got my x. I want to multiply to 27 and add to 12. Okay, well, what are some things that multiply to 27? Okay, well, here's part of the idea. For these to add to a positive and multiply to a positive, they're both going to be positive numbers. So I don't really need to play that game of, oh, which one's negative. Okay, so 1 and 27. No, that's not going to work. They add up to 28. Um, 2, it's odd, so it's not going to be 2. How about 3 and 9? That does it. 3 and 9, so x plus 3, x plus 9, and that's our final answer. All right. Moving on to problem five. For problem five, I've got y squared minus 6y plus 8. I'm going to set up my parentheses. This is y this time. So instead of x's, I'm going to put y's. These two multiply together are still going to make a y squared, so that's all good. And again, we're going to pick numbers that multiply to 8 because we need for when this multiplication happens, whatever this goes here and whatever goes here, when that multiplication happens, those two numbers need to make an 8. That's the middle two numbers we're trying to figure out. Okay, So we are going to make our t-chart what multiplies to 8 and adds to negative 6. Well, to multiply to a positive and add to a negative... Well, the only two types of numbers that multiply to positives are either two positives or two negatives. So for these to add to a negative but multiply to a positive, they're actually both going to have to be negative. So maybe it's negative 1 and negative 8. Now nah, that multiplies to 8, but it adds to negative 9. What about negative 2 and negative 4? That's what we're looking for. That'll add to that negative 6. So it's going to be y minus 2, y minus 4. And there's our answer. Problem six. We're going to make our parentheses. We're back to an x problem, so I'm going to put x and x. Again, we're multiplying to 14, so we always multiply to c, the last term. And we're adding to the middle number here, negative 9. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. I'm going to start making some guesses. So I'm going to look and say maybe it's 1 and 14. Well, 1 and 14, no. Um, well, they both have to be negative. How about negative 2 and negative 7? Those work. Just a little persistence. Just If you're not sure right away, just list out options until you get to the right one. 
Okay, x minus 2, x minus 7, and that's our answer. Problem 7. I'm going to list them out. It's x, so I'm going to put x here, x here, and I'm going to make my t-chart and try to figure out, all right, what multiplies to negative 9, that last number, and what adds to negative 8? Remember, we want it to multiply to negative 9, because when I take number times number right here, the one time when you're distributing that there's not going to be an x involved, that needs to multiply out to that negative 9, okay? And then when I do the inners in the... Um, the what is it inners and last then I, I need that to add up to the middle okay so we want multiplies to negative 9 adds to negative 8 and I'm thinking that that's got to be a 9 and a 1 and I think the 9 needs to be negative so we're gonna have x minus 9 x plus 1 and that's our final answer And one final problem here. It's a y. So we're going to have a y at the beginning of each parenthesis. We want to multiply to 48 and add to 16. Well, everything here seems to be positive. So I think I'm going to be making positive pairs. So I'm not sure. 1 and 48. No, way too big. Okay. 2 and 24, no, way too big when I add them together. Um, 3 and 16, no, still too big. Um, how about 4 and 12? And yep, that does it. X plus 4, or sorry, Y plus 4 and Y plus 12. If you're not sure how I'm going and finding those pairs, just pick numbers that you think go into 48 and divide it into 48. So when I'm like, oh, I think 2 goes into 48, you can always pull out your calculator and do 48 divided by 2 and get 24. Oh, I think 3 might go into 48. 48 divided by 3 is 16, and that will do it. Okay, we eventually got to 4 and 12, and that gives us our final answer. And that is all for this lesson.